Hey guys, how's it going? This is Billy Eat World, and today I've got another episode of Sniper Guide for you. I'm sorry it's taken so long to get this one out to you guys, but the fact is these episodes take so much longer to make than all of my other videos, and there were a ton of other topics I wanted to cover that just got in the way. Anyway, today we're going to be looking at counter sniping and whether it's worth it for your team and for your overall score. Counter sniping is basically the tactic of targeting enemy snipers so that they aren't able to spot and take out your ground forces assaulting the objective. Now because counter sniping is a somewhat passive defensive tactic that requires a fair bit of skill to do well, there is a few things that you need to remember. The most important thing that you need to bear in mind is whether there really is a significant threat from enemy snipers to begin with. Big maps are a good indication that there will be at least one or two enemy recons harassing the rest of your team, but it's up to you to decide what level of threat they pose. A single sniper in the Hills of Firestorm is probably not going to pose a significant threat, but three or four decent snipers overlooking an objective will. Once you've determined that there is enough enemy snipers to run with a counter sniping loadout, you'll need to make sure that you position yourself in an area with concealment that has a clear view of sniper hotspots. You'll also need to choose an area where you aren't at risk from enemy assault troops, which in most cases will be further away from the target than you'd ideally like. A greater range from the target will make shots more difficult, but will also decrease your chance of being taken out by other snipers. Most snipers run with an 8 to 14 time scope and a straight pull bolt, which means that they'll have a very hard time hitting anything at extreme ranges. Usually I find between 400 and 700 meters is about the average range you'll want to be counter sniping at. Just remember though that when you're counter sniping you don't want to be shooting from elevated positions like the Caspian Tower or the Firestorm Hills, because that'll only make you a more visible target for other snipers. The problem with elevated positions is that while you have a better view of your surrounding area, in a lot of cases everyone else has a better view of you as well. This means that when you're trying to counter snipe you should have a good view of these positions from pretty much anywhere on the map. And you shouldn't use these positions yourself because that'll just make you a target for other snipers. Once your position is compromised and the enemy is able to spot you, you'll need to relocate to be effective or risk getting killed. The shadow perk can help you stay hidden, but if you're in a good position and you're smart about how you find targets and the shots that you take, you can consistently go for long periods without being detected. So bearing in mind that you'll need to be taking extreme long shots when counter sniping, it's important that you load out your gun for these ranges. The SRR61 is the most appropriate rifle for extreme long range shooting because it has a lower bullet drop. Because bullet drop is exponential, at longer ranges bullet drop is far greater than at shorter ranges. What this means is that although the bullet drop of the SRR61 and its closest rival the M98B are very similar at short range, the difference is very noticeable at the ranges we'll be dealing with in this video. It is possible to compensate for the bullet drop to some degree with zeroing, but ultimately you'll need to do some manual correction using your mill dots. At 500 plus meters, the correction needed is going to be greater than it would be at 200 meters. So at the end of the day, the SRR61 is still by far the easiest gun to be accurate with at this range. The 40 times ballistic scope is by far the best optic for extreme long range shooting, but it'll also make tracking targets almost impossible. The 14 times variable zoom will allow you to pop out and get a wider view of the target area. And honestly, in my opinion, it's a must have when using the 40 times scope. The 20 time scope is also not a bad scope for long range shooting, but at 500 plus meters, the 40 time scope will make lining up headshots much easier. As well as an appropriate rifle and optic, you'll also need to compensate for the sway of your rifle when zoomed, which can make hitting targets at extreme ranges almost impossible. The bipod attachment will completely eliminate your scope sway, but will also prevent you from moving, which will make you a much easier target for enemy snipers. And because this will need to take the place of the straight pull bolt, you'll also need to pop out to rechamber around, which in some cases will prevent you from landing follow up shots. What this means is that you'll need to go for and land headshots to be effective, which at these ranges can take quite a bit of practice. To help you land headshots, you'll firstly need to accurately determine the range to your target and to understand the ballistic characteristics of your weapon. The rangefinder attachment is able to give you an accurate range to target, but unfortunately will need to take the place of the 14 times variable zoom, which can make it much harder to find targets to begin with. In my opinion, the PLD is probably a better option. As well as locking onto enemy vehicles, the PLD gadget can also range find. Its thermal display pops out close to mid-range enemies in bright white, and it also allows you to much more easily see spotted enemies and enemy scope glint even on the brightest maps. 
But anyway, to round out this loadout, I'd probably recommend the 93R and the Tugs to help you get the edge on close quarters opponents if they do happen to come across you. So unfortunately, having the correct loadout for counter sniping is not enough to actually land shots. Target acquisition is probably the most important part of the process. Try not to find targets with your scope because it'll create a glint that anyone looking in your direction will be able to see. The PLD is a much safer option for finding targets because it has two different low levels of zoom and like I explained before, will pop out targets for you with its thermal display. You'll want to be looking for stationary spotted enemies or scope glint in elevated areas because these will be the enemy snipers. Try not to engage enemy assault troops because while they're running at extreme ranges you're just going to end up wasting bullets trying to kill them. Once you've found your target with the PLD, make sure you make a note of the range to target in the PLD display. You can then zoom in with first your 14x zoom and then your 40x zoom. When you have your target in your crosshairs, use your rifle zeroing function to adjust the scope of your rifle to the range increment nearest to the actual range to the target. Zeroing is the process of using the angle of your scope to compensate for bullet drop, which will mean that you won't need to manually adjust for it as much. If you fire a shot at a target at 500 meters and your zeroing is set to 500 meters, the shot will land in the center of the crosshairs. If the target is slightly further away than the increment point though, you'll need to aim a little higher, and if the target is slightly closer, you'll need to aim a little lower. It's tricky at first to judge exactly how much drop to compensate for, as like I explained before, bullet drop is exponential. Once you've taken enough shots with a weapon at these kinds of ranges though, it starts to become instinctive and you'll find yourself landing headshots more often than not. If you miss your first shot, just make sure that you note exactly where your bullet landed so that you can compensate a little extra for it on your next shot. Something that I find helps as well is to pre-range known sniper hotspots from the position that you're firing from. This may not help straight away, but it will definitely help you hit those shots later on or in other games. So to demonstrate how I take out targets with help from the PLD and the variable zoom, my buddy the Flaming W agreed to let me shoot him in the head a few times to show you guys what it looks like. In these examples, I don't exactly know where he's hiding and I'm using my PLD to try and find his scope glint. So here you can see I'm scanning around with the PLD and sure enough there's his super bright scope glint on the top of that hill. So I've made a note that his range is roughly about 400 meters, which my zeroing is already set to. And now I'm going to quickly zoom in and take him out. Because he's almost exactly 400 meters away from me, I don't need to manually adjust for this shot. In the second example, I'm scanning again with the PLD, but when I find him, he's a little bit further away at 570 meters. This means I'm going to have to set my zeroing to 500 meters and aim slightly above his head. Now as you can see with the first shot, I've adjusted too much and the shot has landed above his head. On the next shot, I'm just going to aim a little bit lower and that should take him out. In the last example, we're now both in different positions and he's now almost 800 meters away from me. For this shot, I'm going to have to set my zeroing for 500 meters and I'm going to have to aim quite a fair bit above his head. Now it wasn't luck that I was able to land that shot first go, I've killed hundreds of targets at this range and the experience of each kill helps you to line up future shots. It's not really hard to kill targets at this range, but it just takes time to learn the corrections needed, and the corrections are going to be different for each gun. But as always, practice makes perfect. So assuming that you can kill targets at these ranges, is counter sniping an effective tactic? Well, like I mentioned before, it really depends on whether the enemy snipers are doing damage to your team, and if this is the case, counter sniping can really help to ease the pressure on objectives. Snipers overlooking MCOMs on rush maps can easily prevent your team from capturing these objectives, so in this sort of situation, it's pretty useful. And as for your overall score, if you're consistently landing headshots, you'll also get marksman bonuses, which are equal to the distance of the shot taken. These bonuses, as well as the marksman ribbons that you get with them, can add up pretty quickly. And it is definitely possible to get a good score when counter sniping. You are bound to cop some flak from other players on your team for camping, no matter how good you are at getting sniper kills. But at the end of the day, it's your game and you're entitled to play it however you like. One thing that might help to reduce this though, is to not squat up with other players. 
There's nothing more annoying than accidentally spawning on a teammate that's 500 meters from the objective, and as a counter sniper, you really aren't in a position to help the squad anyway. Just concentrate on taking out the enemy snipers and don't forget to spot enemy players and to lock onto enemy vehicles with your PLD. This will be helping your team more than they could ever know. But just remember that you don't need to counter snipe for a whole round. It's really going to depend on the map, game mode and the tactics of the enemy team to whether counter sniping is going to be worthwhile. And that can change throughout the course of a game. So just remember to keep reassessing the threat level and remember to spare a thought for your team. And if they're not going so well then maybe try and give them a hand more directly. But anyway, if you haven't given counter sniping a go yet, then give it a go because it is very fun. It's going to take a bit of practice to learn how to do well, but it's worth it in the end. There's nothing quite like landing a headshot at a thousand meters. But anyway guys, that's it. And as always, if you like what you see, please remember to like, comment and subscribe. And if you haven't already, please check out all my other Battlefield 4 videos. I've got them all linked in a playlist in the description below. And if you have any suggestions for weapons or loadouts that you'd like to see in future videos on this channel, then let me know in the comments of this video or send me a tweet on Twitter at BillyEatWorld. But anyway guys, until next time, see you later and have a good one.